Have you ever wondered how rabbits manage to thrive in places that other animals struggle? My name's Emma from Vetter Farm and I am here to answer that question and briefly show you why the rabbit's natural physiology is a blessing in its natural habitat and a curse when kept as a pet. Rabbits are known as a pest in places like Australia. They are prolific breeders who live in the harshest of environments. In the wild, rabbits can live up to and often past 14 years of age. Rabbits are now a part of the family in many households, but sadly, most of them never live a long life in captivity. Why is this? How is it possible that rabbits thrive in desolate places and yet struggle to adapt to a captive environment? It all comes down to diet and exercise. In their natural environment, a rabbit's diet consists primarily of grass. However, it is not the lush green grass that grows in our backyards. They consume high fibre, low protein grasses that other animals would consider to be rubbish. If you walk into any store that sells food for rabbits, you'll probably find shelves full of grain, lucerne and muesli mixes for rabbits. Often, these foods are labelled as rabbit and guinea pig foods. Many people do not realise that rabbits and guinea pigs are not even from the same family. Guinea pigs are closely related to rodents, whereas rabbits are known as lagomorphs. Two completely different animals with completely different dietary requirements. Therefore, mixes that claim to cater for both species are just not suitable. We have established that diets containing grains, lucerne and muesli are not suitable for rabbits. But what happens if we do not follow this advice? Metabolic bone disease rears its ugly head. Metabolic bone disease, or MBD, is not new. It has been around for many years in the reptile world, commonly labelled as a simple calcium deficiency. Research in the last 10 years has brought MBD to the forefront of nutritional awareness. It is now known to be one of the most common diseases in all small pets. MBD can sound very complicated, but put simply, it is caused by an imbalance of nutrients in the diet. Once these imbalances occur, we start to see symptoms of MBD which range in severity. If your rabbit has any of the following symptoms, it could be MBD. Dribbling from the mouth, inability to chew, jaw abscess, fused, fractured or broken spines, bladder stones and overgrown teeth. In this x-ray, the rabbit has more than one symptom. Let's go through them. The first symptom can be clearly seen, overgrown teeth. The rabbit looks like it almost has a beak, making it very difficult to eat and drink. A vet can file the teeth back to a suitable length, but it can be costly, time consuming and painful for the animal. The next symptom that we can see are these big bone masses in the jaw. Because of the lack of nutrients in the diet, the teeth became loose in the rabbit's jaw. The body then dumped a whole heap of calcium in that area to try and set the teeth back into the jaw. They did reset but are now in the wrong position with a bone mass. The last symptom is due to the bone mass. A rabbit's tear ducts run straight through here and then continue down the back of the throat. Because there is a bone mass where the tear duct runs, it is now blocked, forcing any liquid back out the eyes. Many rabbits are incorrectly diagnosed with eye problems such as conjunctivitis when there can be an underlying problem such as MBD. All of the symptoms we have discussed can be prevented, although not all of them can be treated. Any damage to the spine will result in euthanasia and some symptoms will require vet visits and sometimes surgery. It is important to keep in mind that these symptoms are caused by diet and a lack of adequate exercise and care. The only way to treat and prevent MBD in your rabbit is to improve the diet and the rabbit's environment to encourage exercise. A nutritious rabbit diet is actually quite simple to achieve. Their needs are simple, high fibre and low protein. The teeth of rabbits grow continuously, so they need rough, high fibre grasses to chew on to wear them down. 
this should make up the bulk of the diet or about 80%. Vetifarm recommends fescue hay, which is extremely high in fibre. Rabbits under the age of six months should not be fed loosen at all. Don't be fooled by your rabbit. Rabbits are what we call concentrate selectors. This means that they actively select high fat, high protein foods. Just like children, they nearly always choose the things that are bad for them, like muesli mixes or grains. Just because your rabbit likes a certain mix does not mean it is good for them. For this reason, rabbits need to be fed a uniform extruded pellet, that is, one that looks all the same. This prevents the animal from picking out the bad stuff. Vetifarm recommends Rabbit Origins, a high fibre, low protein, extruded uniform pellet formulated by vets. Vegetables are a great addition to a rabbit's diet, although not necessary if the rabbit is being fed a complete diet such as Rabbit Origins. Stick to dark greens and reds and steer clear of things like lettuce as it will upset the gut of your rabbit. Diet makes up a large part of the reason why rabbits get MBD. However, husbandry is very important as well. When I talk about husbandry, I am referring to things like exercise and living areas. Rabbits need a lot of exercise. In the wild, they work hard for their food and get plenty of opportunities to move about at full speed. In captivity, as pets, rabbits rarely get the exercise they require. We know now that lack of adequate exercise is also a major contributor to MBD and poor health in rabbits. Bladder stones have been a common problem in pet rabbits for years. In the past, the experts pointed towards excess calcium as the cause. In the last couple of years, there has been new research emerge that proves this theory wrong. In fact, rabbits in captivity have been deprived of calcium for so long that other symptoms of MBD are now occurring on top of bladder stones. So, if calcium is not the cause of these painful stones, what is? Here's an interesting fact for you. The only way that a rabbit can completely empty its bladder is to be fully stretched out in mid-jump. The rabbit kicks its legs out and sprays urine behind itself. In captivity, rabbits are forced to urinate in small spaces, therefore making it impossible for the animal to empty its bladder completely. Only the top layer will be expelled, leaving a sludge of minerals which will eventually turn into bladder stones. Your rabbit must be able to empty its bladder properly at least a couple of times a day, or it will end up with this severe and painful problem. While the symptoms of MBD sound very scary, and need to be taken seriously if you stick to the recommended high fibre, low protein diet and provide these great animals with the exercise that they need, you will have many years of fun ahead with your bunny. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.